Tenable Network Security, creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Jumpstart your security program today and evaluate Security Center CV, the continuous monitoring solution. For more information, visit them on the web at tenable.com. ProXPN is the leading VPN service, offering free accounts, excellent premium features, and an outstanding commitment to privacy and security online. Use the discount code WEEKLY and save 50% off for life. NetSparker, the developers of desktop and cloud-based web application security scanners that enable you to automatically identify vulnerabilities in your web applications and web services. NetSparker scanners employ a unique and dead accurate vulnerability scanning engine that automatically verifies vulnerabilities with a proof of concept. For more information, visit them on the web at netsparker.com or email them at contact at netsparker.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Security Weekly. This is the security news for this week. I'm reading reports that there are Internet of Things that can hack your phone. This is kind of, uh, well, first it's concerning because of the way that it's being reported. I find it slightly, or can not, in one case, not even slightly incorrect, it's incorrect. So the one that says that there's a printer that can hack your phone. Bullshit. Is uh, really, uh, is, uh, it is bullshit because it really means that someone by the name of Julian Oliver basically created a fake printer that's just a shell of a printer but basically put a femtocell in the <laughs> printer. I'm like, dude, that's not a printer. That's a cell phone hacks that were talked about at ShmooCon like five or six years ago. Really? <laughs> you're yeah. you're do, just putting that inside of a shell Do you remember when printer? they drove the van inside the Rio at <laughs> DEFCON? Like, like, come on. <laughs> like, so there is uh, actually from Wired, uh, it says the evil office printer hijacks your cell phone Look, connection. We're, we're that it's not a printer. We're screwed. It's not a printer. We're intercourse, right? It, I mean, it's a stingray. It's a whatever it is. It exactly. It's not a printer. It's a, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so that was like not interesting to me. That just means you took technology that people it's presented like about you, security like conferences like, like years ago and stuck it in a printer and called it a printer. That's really? like yeah. when you get in the van that doesn't have windows, it turns out you don't get free candy. <laughs> that too. I mean, that means you could take I, you could take anything and put a, a device in it and call it whatever. Like, there's a cow that can hack your cell phone. Well, that's because it. But, but so I attach a femto cell to a cow, so cows are evil. Cows can ha- no, no. No, Paul, Paul, that's exactly what's happening, though, right? We're taking these little embedded uh, devices. Right. We're sticking Linux in them, or we're sticking some sort. No, of no, no, no. You said embedded. You can't say embedded. You have to say IoT. IoT. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. We're taking this little IoT device, and we're sticking a kernel in it, and we haven't even checked any of the patches on it. We haven't checked whether it's secure or not. But we're just like letting it out in the world and saying, "Okay, be fly, be free." And lo and behold, the thing gets hacked. Surprise, surprise, right? I mean, it's yeah, yeah, just. Endless amounts of ranting could come at this point. It related, one of my stories is that I thought was interesting on the IoT apocalypse was just we can't even have con- adult conversations about it. Um, cause it has so much hype. and there's just Well, and this one's kind of interesting, Jack. Speaking of hype, so this one says that um, hackers can steal your cell phone pictures from your IoT crockpot. Now, what? Uh-huh. <laughs> the vulner- the so vulnerability, first of all, the vulnerability pot. though, but the vulnerability. Right, so this really only applies to the Midwest, where people are making hot dishes. But it's not um, just the crock pot, I'm, and I'm a huge fan of crock pot cooking. But Does this that hot dishes like y- your neighbor. The, the <laughs> Belkin, <laughs> you, you have to put the app on your cell phone to be vulnerable to this device, <laughs> yeah. to, to this thing. So it's not so much that, like I thought of it as like. Anyone with an Android device that's in my home, like an attacker is going to take control of my crock pot and they're going to like use that as a jumping off point to hack into the phones. You really have to have the Belkin app to be vulnerable to this device. So I think there's a combination of, well, yeah, the crock pot is vulnerable, whatever, but it's the app, it's the app on your phone that's more of the vehicle into hacking your phone than so much so the crock pot. Um, and this, this is motherboarddevice.com. The details are kind of uh, sporadic. I haven't read the full report, to be honest with you, to see exactly how they're doing this. But it seems like there's more of a issue with the app being the access to your phone and not so much the crockpot being the access to your phone. I always speculated that 
like Armageddon would happen when people could hack into devices in your home and use those as jumping off points to hack into other things. In large part, we have not seen that. Just no, wait, wait, wait. No, yes, we have. We saw it last week. I mean, come on. Mirai, right? Mirai is, yeah, but is, that's, is, but that's is different. a Mirai, serious threat. But jo- it's a serious threat. But, Jeff, it's not after my personal information and other devices in my home. Yeah. It's no, using no, those it devices. it just took the yeah. fucking internet offline. Well, that's, but that's, that's totally <laughs> different, right? That doesn't, that doesn't steal stuff from my phone that takes the internet down and makes it unusable. And I'm not disagreeing with you that that's bad. So, but, <laughs> but that's a different attack scenario we're, than I, mean, we're talking I get my about information stolen because I didn't patch my webcam. No. I didn't patch my webcam, and the internet went down for a little while. Like, whatever. But those are the first shots. So, uh, yeah, they are the first shots, I think. A lot, a lot of your, a few of your stories, a few of mine overlap, and at least one of Joff's yeah, overlap, because, you know, we're talking about the intersection of shit web apps and IOT the internet, things. internet of shit. Is that the a, internet is, is of that things. the Twitter account? The yeah, internet yeah, of crap. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, internet yeah, of shit. There's a there's a Twitter account. We're talking about the the intersection of web apps. I mean, of uh, uh, mobile, mobile apps, mobile apps, apps cloud. which are garbage. Cloud, which is garbage. Well, no, cloud isn't garbage, shit. but the apps, the, the web claps. applications they wait, write wait, to run wait, in the cloud wait, wait. are shit. Wait, I gotta you gotta get the right words. Put the hyphen in the middle. Cloud enabled. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, look. The you know, I was reading, I was reading back through the Mirai. You know, this is how crazy I am. I was reading back through the Mirai source code today. Very I important. Like, I think. Go ahead, Joff. I, I'll give you my well, prediction. But go ahead. Uh, well, I consulted with a, with a customer, and he's like, you know, how bad's it going to get? And um, I've said it's going to get very bad. Uh, Mirai has the capability not only to do UDP attacks; it has TCP attacks. It has. GRE attacks that has generic uh, HTTP proxy and HTTP server level attacks. And everything in the Mirai scanner code actually talks about, uh, not talks about, everything in the Mirai scanner code is looking for weak credentials mm-hmm. in the device to get itself you know, locked in and embedded in that device. Now, do we know any Internet of Things devices that have weak credentials? Oh, Jesus, all of them. But but also yeah. okay, it's not just Mirai now, right? Because there's, there there's a new variant. There's a new variant. There are variants. Five people days, are taking um, compromised thirty five hundred right. different. So they, but it also but it's, it, it took bits and pieces from Mirai, the scanner piece that right, Joff was talking right. about, the sixty uh, credentials that it used, and used that to spread across the internet. Not only IPv four, but also it's now IPv6. it has <laughs> IPv six. It's expanded upon. We talked about that hack naked news. <laughs> it's, it's, right. So IPv six. The only people that understand IPv6 are like a few thousand. A few architects and engineers A few and thousand attackers. of us who care and then some smart attackers mm-hmm. and now some dumb attackers based on, you know, what people have said about the source code. It, it, it's, it's... I, yeah, so I, tru- I mean, I, I so told whatever. You my, my so if anybody's been listening this whole time, that earlier optimism of mine... <laughs> Well, I truly think that the internet is going to crash on Election Day and Black Friday. Um, well, I think prediction. that's true for probably different reasons, though. No, I think, that, I think that attackers the, are specifically going to launch. Election Day is um, Election Day in the U.S., um, but uh, you what know what? It, Every friend? time I, as much as I want to say things about Election Day in the U.S., um, uh, pretty much guarantee that us common people will lose no matter who wins. Um, <laughs> my friend, and, uh, my and, friend Fred <laughs> Rui, uh, who's in the and, cigar industry, has an awesome Facebook account. He posts about bacon a yeah, lot. And, uh, awesome. He had a, a post that said, uh, are there going to be complimentary barf bags in <laughs> the booths for election day? Like, that is how bad the commentary has gotten here in the I U.S. I will be in Seattle next week. And I've already voted, and uh, and uh, the Canadian border is not far away. But I, I'd be willing to bet 
No, uh, nice don't be Canadians. one of those people that's going to be like, I'm leaving the country no, because of No, I'm going this. to Honduras. I'm not going to Canada. As much as I love my You're Canadian friends. You're not going friends. to Honduras. Yeah, on, yeah. I'm, no. gonna, I'm just going to live don't. on fish. and. No, no, you don't want to go to Honduras. Yeah, I do. It's now like we're like off I on a tangent. Live, we don't want to go to <laughs> Honduras. No, like, wait, 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 wait. So I know people have been to Honduras. You don't want to be to Honduras. I've been to Honduras. I like parts of it. So anyway, IOT, we're screwed. Yes, denial of service. Who knows who it's going to be? The real sickening thing about um, Mirai and other things, there are two things that terrify me. Uh, the first wave was Mirai. And so who's going to do what interesting things with the Mirai source code moving forward and make it more terrifying? And the thing that we have to keep in mind is this was not reflexive or amplified in any well, way. Well, the, the other thing... That's this right. was... Well, the right. other thing this that, was... The other thing to keep in this mind was is... was proof of concept there were, there were presentation, broke the internet. There was a presentation at BrewCon. Uh, there was a presentation at DerbyCon. And there was a presentation at B-Sides Las Vegas. <laughs> and I strongly encourage the attackers not no, to go watch no, those no, no. presentations. There, there's never been research on this. <laughs> if you happen YouTube. to be a criminal... <laughs> Don't go to irongeek.com Please or bsideslv.org. Or don't get ideas don't, from that don't, don't, and look at the things they could do. Because there are people I was the who one. I was sh- one of the people to give presentations at all of those <laughs> conferences that I just mentioned. <laughs> there are people that have told you how to do bad things. Bad things. Like take over the better world. Better than you're doing no. them now. I actually I posted some of that to, to, to Facebook this week, and I was actually going back and watching... Like some of the the beginnings of my talks, yes. where I talk about like how what bad if, the problem what if is, you did like this? and what if, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh my god, <laughs> like holy crap! I'm like, <laughs> no one go watch. I'm and I really feel, and I, like, I will admit and publicly, you're like, uh, well, I mean, Iron, Iron is, Geek, could you take like 25, 35 yeah. videos down right now? But I really feel <sighs> a, a, a moral responsibility in that I was recognizing the problem as far back as 2013 and talking about it and saying things like, I really think we need to fix this problem for the greater good. We need to get embedded device manufacturers to understand that this is a problem now and it's only going to get worse. Like, I feel bad and I take responsibility. And I think I look bad, personally, that I did, and I feel bad that I didn't work harder to fix this problem, to put us in the situation that we are today, where all those things that myself, and it's not just me, I'm not the only one, believe me, that could stand up and say, I told you so. That's not the point. I'm kind of embarrassed to say There's, I told you so, right. because I feel like I didn't work hard enough to fix the problem. I'm not saying other people <sighs> didn't, and there are people that have made a little further progress than I have in this space, but we as a community didn't make enough progress, and I think the problem is going to continue to get worse from where it is, to not just be an isolated incident on Brian Krebs and not just be an isolated incident where, you know, we lost Twitter and some other did services well, did for you a see, day. Did you see today's Things are news? Things far worse than that. Did you see today's news? Joff and I both put the story yeah, in. Yeah, we both put the story in. I mean, the, the Liberia we, got dosed. We, uh, we, knocked got. A, we knocked a country offline. Yeah, the well, whole we country. Not, when I say we, netizens, how's that for a buzzword? Wow. Um, yeah, people. Well, I mean, you got the you know some the of these smaller countries. Ma- I think they Mariah said their their, ma- their backbone had a maximum capacity across the country of around about five terabits, and these uh, distributed you, denial of I mean, services. You could are speculate that that was just further testing. Right. That was just further so testing. If, if you put a terabit down a five terabit pipe, everything's broken. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Mm. Right. You know, and and we like. Uh, just because of but, the capacity look, everybody of the, your, 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 your DDoS well, is so, amplified only by the capacity of the other people trying right, to but, use the but, internet, right? Right. But just so if you take, <clears throat> in this case, as Joff said, five terabit maximum connectivity, you put a terabit on that, the number of things that fall over, there's a natural amplification, right? Mm. SMTP retries. Yeah, yeah, all, yeah. I all gotcha. of the I gotcha. TCP yeah. connections right. that are like, oh, trying that didn't reconnect. work. Let's right. try again. Yep. And without doing an amplification attack, you get an amplification attack. That's a great attack. technical explanation of, of why that is. So it's, 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 yeah. it's not it's only like, that, Oh, Jack, hey, you shit, I'm going to keep uh, retrying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but y- y- if I can add to that, you also get the, the problem of the branch circuits, right? You might have five terabit 
capacity in, in you know in the, the the tier one ISPs in a country. Right. But you go out to the edge of the network, the last mile problem, there is not five terabits of capacity <laughs> there. <laughs> you know what? Uh, no, you know what's really frightening to me. Uh, and, and we're move on to something else, but uh, the DDoS stuff is very frightening, and it's being amplified in multiple different ways. <laughs> However, the thing that I, one of the things that I talked about in my talks from previous years, are the privacy implications, mm -hmm. and the fact that we can have something like Mirai with relatively unsophisticated attackers. So, I mean, there are some sophisticated no, wait, attackers wait, wait, wait. in let's, the mix. Let's, but let's stroke their egos. Skilled. Skilled, skilled, definitely skilled. 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 Let's stroke right. their egos. Skilled, but because um, because you only unsophisticated motives. I will say, right, right. Like, but I just want to take down the internet. We need to, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of technical skill that goes really into that. There's, there's skill, but also it's like uh, if it's easy to do, why would you use a hard attack? Right. It's right. like APT. Yeah. Right. You know. Yeah. Like, uh, My concern is like, what if they wanted to be stealthy about it and perform attacks? Oh where God. would they go? And then uh, would I? I almost don't even want to say <laughs> don't, don't, yeah, it's already right, out there. Right, but anyway, right, like, we're what not if the they were to start what if, attacking what if people's they wanted, privacy and ads on if, these devices? What if they wanted to do something subtly to to so impact these devices God. that impacts people's privacy, that impacts um, uh, you know kind of adware on these devices? Right, so Those were some of the other things that click, I speculated. Click jacking like, toasters, you know. I mean. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. We Not even so much that, but maybe using them to serve ads or right. serve ads on the devices right. themselves without impacting the... They've proven, it's something that we've said all along, that you can compromise these devices and do whatever you want with them. Yeah, we speculated that DDoS would be bad. I think I underestimated how, how much bad. people rely on the <laughs> internet and how bad that wow. problem could be. The interrelatedness of de the yeah. interdependencies... Mm -hmm. um, the things that fell over because something else fell over because something else fell over, yeah, I staggering. think was one of the lessons last week was like, oh, I can't do this, but I have nothing to do with that, but that uses this and, ah, oh, I just, I, I, I just want your credit card to clear so I can sell you a coffee or whatever. But what if rather than using webcams and DVRs to DDoS the internet, they're using to rebroadcast a message. I mean, I'm talking some serious Mr. Robot stuff here now, but like, what if, what if it's a message? What if it's the advertising, so it, malvertising? What if it's a political message? What if it's... So, so for the, the old people in the audience, instead of Mr. Robot, Max Headroom, yeah, I, I mean, mean <laughs> this is idiocracy. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. that's the example well, I use in mind. As I said last time we were together, idiocracy is not a how-to. It is not a documentary. Right. It's not supposed to be those, but it turns out. Yeah, but in, in, in speaking, <sighs> it, you could almost take the as it turns out, what attackers decided to do was use this for <clears throat> taking down the Internet, which... As it turns out, uh, doing that on things where we are today on Election Day and on Black Friday can have some pretty interesting and somewhat we serious so impacts on it, it economy, it, it, on it, businesses. You know, on you're talking about taking things out next Tuesday, U.S. Election Day. Um, it doesn't have to do any real damage. No, it's perception. It gives but the it's perception, perception right. that undermines faith in a system is potentially as destructive as... What if you do that on Black Friday, though, and you... Could you influence... My fear is, could you influence the yes. economy you in could some you way? Could you influence... Yes. Oh, you could. Well, it wouldn't be Black Friday. It would be what they what they're calling Cyber Monday, right? Which Cyber is the, Monday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, y you absolutely will have a direct impact on economic activity. There is no doubt. It, I and mean, to me, that's scary. It, yeah, that's terrifying. Let's let's anyway. Move. Let's, that was where so I wanted wait, to hey, get to the point um, on that. Hey, you know that dude, Bo Bullock at Black Ooh. Hills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that dude. Yeah, he's awesome. He's kind of smart. 
And he what likes to do interesting research. Like with OWA? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. I've, known about, I've known about, I've had the inside yeah, scoop yeah, yeah, yeah. on the story for a so, while. <laughs> so uh, I noticed neither of you put that in there. So I thought, hey, wait, how is that story not there? It's cause, Oh, it's there's not some, new. I will say so there's more, there's there's more OW- coming more coming in the right. webcast in the works to, we're, to talk we're, about right, this. I'm but sure that, so stay tuned. We've done tuned. the initial, we're going to. Stay tuned for more. Stay tuned for more. We've done the initial, hey, we're going to announce it and piss a whole bunch of people off <laughs> but Sorry. owa and office 365 first Sorry, of all microsoft sorry uh, duo security we love you duo security it wasn't right, you but it's, it's not you but you were they were kind of friendly for structure in underlying infrastructure uh collateral damage uh there were collateral damage in that and i Bo, apologize i love duo security we, we great love company. duo yeah. But Bo did some amazing stuff. He's uh, done some good work, yeah. With with help, and so um, check out the post at Black Hills. Um, that's not because it's not because it's because it's great work. It's well, not because I mean, of anything. It's else. a true zero day uh, vulnerability it's that, that they released, uh, um, which essentially allows you to compromise a whole bunch of stuff and it, credentials and crazy. usernames over OWA. It's crazy. Yeah. And I mean, and, and when you get into Office three sixty five. Um, Microsoft has yet to discover phishing. That's, that's just a whole other rant. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, oh, hey. I looked at the calendar, and it turns out it's the end of 2016. Uh, December 31st. Well, I mean, it's, it's, we're towards the end of the, we're towards the end of the year. It can't be 2016 are. can't be in the rearview mirror fast enough. However, <laughs> what's really freaking cool is Google, Apple, and Google and Microsoft are arguing about? Please forgive me, everyone. If you don't have a drink in your hand, wait till you're somewhere where it's appropriate to drink. Pour a strong one, and then with me. As I say, Google is making people talk about responsible disclosure. Whoa. Drink, everybody. Drink right now. First of all, I hate the term responsible because it's usually a weapon used against the researcher. But it's not simple. I'm not even going to take Project Zero and other parts of Google do amazing work. Microsoft has made some amazing changes in the past 15 years, Apple is amazing in some ways, but it's November something something of 2016, and the the titans of our industry are getting in pissing matches over disclosure. And it just it, if I had a soul, it would fucking crush it. Thank God I don't have one. Where do, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Wow, I'm so depressed now, but no, hey, it's a so sad just statement. To, just I, in I, case I anybody got like optimistic over my bit of optimism earlier. Yeah, yeah, it, you know, it's it, it is a sad statement. Um, you know, the, to to us in the community, I think responsible disclosure has always been just that. You know, we we will come forward, um, provided Co- we're not going to get burned. Right, right. right. Um, so it's it's coordinated. <sighs> All parties involved have to be responsible. It needs to be coordinated. Zero tolerance policies don't work for your kid's school or Project Zero, in my opinion. Even though I have an amazing amount of respect for people that even a few years ago I didn't... um, I don't know. Anyway, my my whole thing on that is if you want optimism... In shiny, happy rainbows, go to Disney World. If you want the real scoop, listen to the show. <laughs> sure. um, yeah. I do want to say that um, the... No, that is not the story that I, I, I clicked on. Oh. Uh, Google's security head says Pixel is as uh. secure as the iPhone. I'll save you the trouble of reading okay. the story. Essentially, open source means that it's secure because more people are looking at it, oh, which... So, um, Go ahead, let's Jack. just, I, let's, I would you, like to say things about it, but let's the, just, the word bullshit comes to mind, but yeah, I just, yeah, if I you're my age, you remember the little toys you pulled backwards, pulled yeah, backwards yeah, and let go. Yeah. I would like to do that with Rob Graham over the open source security thing. Oh, I didn't see his latest post. No, no, it. It, well, oh. his, he's done some great, but mm. Rob is Rob. Um, but just the idea, it's, uh, many eyes make, uh, well, if no. nobody looks at it. 
it's not true, and I, I have I have nothing to say but open SSL, uh, <laughs> which also brings me to, uh, and I want to keep this very brief. Uh, technology decisions. I have a Google Nexus 6P. Google came out with the Pixel, and I have to say I'm equally as disappointed and furious with Apple over the new MacBook Pro as I am with Google over the new Pixel. I you seem to my, agree with my me here. Piece of. Ch- what are you running, a Samsung? What are you running? That's, that's, that's a Note 4, yeah. which I hate. That was pre-exploding Samsung was pre- phone. <laughs> this is yet to burst into flames. Notice no flames. No uh, flames. Uh, uh, you and I have run no... You run a no I've run no... Yeah, to the the it, Note is a great was, phone. It was a great before phone. Before they started blowing up. Whatever the last update that Google and Sprint conspired to push down where GPS doesn't work anymore. Wonderful. Intercourse thyself. Um, but you, uh, I I just know. because it's open, it doesn't make it secure. It okay, doesn't okay, make okay, it wait, secure. And, and just because and, it's, and because it's closed doesn't make it secure. Doesn't make it secure either. And just because it's two hundred fifty dollars more expensive than the phone I have now with not as many features doesn't mean that I'm going to buy it. Nor does it I, make it more secure or I, usable I, I, or uh, the greatest thing since I'm, friggin' sliced bread. I, what I, is going on I, in the world? Yeah. And Apple's MacBook Pros are the same thing. Like, there's no security benefit there. I, if it's there is, is it worth thousands of dollars? I'm just really, really okay, so I'm disappointed in both Google everybody. and Apple recently with the releases of technology. And, other than and, and I'll add Microsoft as a Windows as a as a I, I was. How's this to put it on your today. head? I want to go buy Amazon Echoes because I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the usability of the Echo platform and kind of downplaying a little bit of the security that I was worried about that it was a device in my house that's listening all of the time in favor of... A wife? Usab- <laughs> she's listening even when she's not listening, sorry. let's be honest. I'm sorry, I had to go there. Um, but yeah. if you, uh. for example... so. Google and Apple, just ridiculous pricing and technology choices. Amazon has a great ad campaign. And what's enticing me with their technology is the uh, the lower price and integration with your smart home and the interface being your voice when you have something like smart things. Now, I can test it out with my Fire TV that I have in my house. Now, right. I have to push the button on my remote and talk, right. which is a, an inconvenience, which which is to the Amazon's advantage. Because I'm like, you know what? You're I'm like, that works. listening to your talk, right? I'm like, yeah. that works. And oh, I'm like, wait, you know wait, what? Wait, wait, Let me do this. Let me do this. My my wife and my no, kids. No, no, wait, wait, tell me. Okay, Google. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> okay, Google. There's some just horrible things we could do with that. Siri? Anyway. <laughs> Cortana. Well, nobody has Cortana. <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the thing, the thing of it is, though, uh, it, when you test it out, I'm like, that really works. Like, I can add some apps on my phone and push the button on 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 the Alexa thing and be like, turn off all the lights in the basement. And I'm like, holy crap! I'm like, that worked. I'm like, yeah. how awesome is that for? Your wife and your kids and your Stalkers, babysitters and your your which is like my mom and my mother in law like yeah. now they control their house just with their voice. I'm like that actually kind of works. Like I'm almost my willing. My voice is <laughs> scary for me from a security perspective, but the usability <laughs> is so much there that I'll make the investment. Now, when you look at the minuscule, and even if there is benefit from getting the new MacBook Pro or the new the new Google phone. There's no huge, in my opinion, no huge strides in security, no huge strides in usability. In fact, I think there's even, in the MacBook Pro case, uh, a step back in usability, which makes me not want to adopt the newer technology. Um, do, you, which do, you is just smart, do you think smartphones are kind of hitting the upper uh, edge or the upper curve of their... Um, yes. Uh, uh, yes. you, you know, well, that, that te- I agree, that te- Joff, because technology. with the 6P, because it's going to get the new, from what I understand, Jack, correct me if I'm wrong, it's going to get the new operating system that runs on Pixel, and the 6P and the Pixel are pretty close. Yeah, they're, hard, they're pretty like close. There's, right. n- but, but, there's uh, not $250 you know, to, there to, that to I'm your, burning to spend right. to get to the Pixel, which to, for me, to, to your like point, I would spend right. that. Ah. To your point, it's your story about... Um, you know, Pixel being as secure, 
people on Twitter have observed that that's absolutely untrue until you open the box. Right. But um, we, what do you mean to open that? The, that Android is as secure as iOS. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely true mm-hmm. until you open the box. But, um, you know, when Google, when Google attacks Apple with their 90-day deadline or Microsoft with a seven-day for stuff that right, active... Right, we were talking about earlier, yeah. Um, they... As much as I respect Google, the answer to that is fuck you, Android. And it's not Android is an OS. This, the, the statement that Android is secure as OS, iOS is based on... The alcohol may be catching up. Um, is based on... <laughs> The native OS. Alcohol's way beyond. <laughs> it's far surpassed you, Jack. I'll catch up. Uh, <laughs> it's the ecosystem, right? Yeah. Google has built an Android ecosystem, which is fundamentally flawed. Mm-hmm. And therefore, if you use it, you're pantsless. You know, you're, yeah, you're, 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 you're you internet have a pantsless. Well, you're not pantsless. You you, have you, but you have so, to be a very savvy... Right, user to be able to secure it to a point, right, and, and also and, you know, so, also not so Samsung be has being being intoxicated, like not be stupid and install apps that it's, are going to get you in trouble. Right, Samsung has like pushed down things which have destroyed performance on this Note uh, Four. Yeah, well, that's the thing with Samsung. But what they've I, done, what they've done is they've pushed down like Lookout now scans every app update that I do. Mm-hmm. And so, it and look performance the, has uh, collapsed. Look out a security thing. Uh, it's, but it's like a little. It's like little snitch yeah, for but OS it's, it's installed by either Sprint or Samsung. I don't know who threw it on my phone, but it's like well, uh, that, that's the part performance of the thing. Hey, so is look out, failure. Look out is, uh, is it, and I'm, there's not anything against Lookout, but I've got a two-year-old phone, which has a lot of video on it. No, has a lot of has a few videos, a lot of audio, a lot of images, and so it doesn't have a ton of space available. Mm-hmm. I'm closing in on two and years. And what is time to what replace? Look it's just, do? it's basic, I don't want to say antivirus, right? Endpoint protection for, mm-hmm. so it scans apps to make sure they're not hostile, but it's scanning mm-hmm. when, when Google updates Google or Android native apps, it scans them for me. It tells you if Google's doing something evil. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. It's like, no, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, or or when Samsung native apps get updated. Oh, the Samsung the, native apps are the, awful, the, yeah. The garbage, right? Well, and, th- th- this, is, this is where I have a big problem in the smartphone market. Like, who gave you the right to just stick an app on my phone? I hate that too, John. Yeah, I, mean, I, I agree. It's, it's I why, agree. I mean, it's why you, I spend, right? It's why I spend the extra money on the Google so the, the I, if they hadn't screwed up in some ways, I would have pre-ordered a Pixel. It's like a I would have too. It, the, the the price point it's just, it's, just, it's, just, it's like fifty percent more. Right. Like the price point is nuts. My net six P was like four seventy nine. The equivalent Pixel is like seven twenty nine right, or something. Right. I'm that's like, nuts. how? Yeah, yeah, that's up. That's it's oh hey significant. Now, if you're introducing a new feature that warrants that, believe me. I'll be right there with you as but, a power you I mean they're clearly right. like targeting They're selling to us. Yeah, they're right? selling to they're us. They're selling to us and they're and doing a really bad a job large, of it. Large yeah. part of our <laughs> yes. But they're not justifying it cuz we'll spend money, right? Like, right? like you and I have discussed, I will spend $50 for a bar spoon. Right. <laughs> let me, let that sink in. It's that and, high end. And I have It's two like of the them. people that'll spend $750,000 on a supercar. I Except have, we're on a smaller scale, and Jack have, will spend fifty dollars on a bar spoon. And I have two fifty dollars bar them, spoons, one right? for my home and one for my mobile rig. Right. So <laughs> if you make the, if you make the sale, I'll make the purchase. But it, both Apple, something about your value. The value prop is not there. The value prop's not there. Right. But and I if just, you can. If you can find a value prop in a fifty dollars spoon, but you can't find it in a pixel, that just makes me want to pee myself laughing. <laughs> <laughs> That's really all we need to say about oh, that. Oh, hey, so something that broke today, this evening, I believe. By the way, Emmett 
is being retired by Microsoft. <laughs> what? No way. No way. Yes. Oh. Yes. Man, Jack, you just made me sad. <laughs> Microsoft has announced the end of life for Emmet. They've actually extended they've given it up a on endpoint bit. security. I mean, with well, no, 40, what, what they've done forty plus vendors in endpoint security at least. But what they've done is the stuff that doesn't require us as administrators to be engaged is built into Windows Ten. Oh, I see. And so it's time to retire it. Um, unfortunately, if you're running a real operating system like Windows Seven where they don't destroy your ability to output video reliably, um, you, you're kind of left twisting in the wind. But um, I want to uh, just transition to, to wireless for a oh, second. Yeah, yeah. Um, our, our good friend Troy Hunt, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. who was on the show, I've, and there is no uh, like benefit to me to mention Ubiquity. They're not a sponsor of the show. I do want to say that... Um, I've used Ubiquity products for a long time, and I really like them. Um, and Troy Hunt published an article uh, just today, it looks like. Uh, this article is dated today. I, I thought yeah. it was yesterday, but it is dated today. Uh, and it's titled, Ubiquity, All the Things, How I Finally Fixed My Dodgy Wi-Fi. And what Troy oh, says in here is that he's like, in Australia? He lives in Australia. Yes. And he bought Good a dude. he bought a really big house, uh, and he thankfully, thank you, Troy, put it in square feet for us dumb Americans, <laughs> and it's like five thousand square is, feet. What is, or so. what is it's like a like really metric, big house. Metric hectares it or something. Kind of metric thing, but he, he, but he, yeah. he bought a really big house, and he's like, I had these two Linksys access points, and he's like, I'd have to reboot them, and they were always dropping off, oh and then they sent God. me a new one. And it's just everything we've said about off-the-shelf hardware like that. And uh, you, so now with, he went with over wireless, the top. Let me just say three letters that will make a few mm. network people cry. When you're talking about wireless and integrating with the rest of your network, MTU. Yeah, there's that. But there's also crappy God. firmware. It's, it, I, I'm not going to name, name the firmware or hardware that I use at home. However... <laughs> but he, what you. he said was interesting, and it was spot on, as Troy will be, he was spot on. And he said, you know, Linksys and other manufacturers will release hardware and release software, a couple of revisions, and then stop. And then the recommendation, he said, was to put open source software on there. And he's like, hey, wait a minute. Like, I bought a device from a manufacturer. Why aren't they providing me with the software that I need to be successful and run a really great environment well, for my wireless. Welcome to the commodity market. Yeah. So what he decided to do, uh, he actually consulted with some of his friends that um, and over-designed it. To his credit, he disclosed, look, I over-designed it. And he said, look, I want to build, I want to overcompensate and overbuild my wireless network. And they recommended I do that all this gear. I truck. Yeah, we, we all do. I think a lot of, a a lot lot of us, us do that in security. <coughs> so he um, purchased all this gear from Ubiquity and deployed it in his house, walked you through step by step everything that was happening, and in the end said, I'm really happy. And he's like, you don't have to go buy all the stuff that I did, but like, he's like, I'm happy. Now, I've run Ubiquity access points in my home for a long time. Um, I would stand behind their product. I think they make a, a fantastic product. And what he said, I think, is kind of interesting for security, is that he said, you know, when you buy something off the shelf, such as from Linksys or Belkin or Netgear, they try to give you one device that does a lot of things. And he said, when you take it up a notch into the ubiquity realm, he said, they, ubiquity does the same thing. However, it's more targeted devices. You get right. access points to do access points. You get switches to do switching in, in the network, and you get firewalls to do the, the firewalling and routing, and they're, they're separate devices. And if you want a bridge, you know, that is a separate device as well. And in fact, a friend of mine Oh God! Who you does a lot bridge. of consulting here, I'm, here I'm in Rhode too Island? Sober for people. To no, no, no. He says stop. Ubiquity makes the, the best wireless bridges, and he said, bridge, "You know what? No, bridge, he no, says bridge. you can get an Ubiquity it's, bridge. It's, it's Linux bridging. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking about a, wireli a no, wireless. No, wireless bridge. It, but it's still it's, it's Linux bridging. I'm sorry. I'm going to sound like an old beardy bastard, but 
No, no, no. Linux it's a, and bridges. Like it looks like a satellite go dish. To, go to go and to it, BSD. There's some. No, no, no. But, but Paul, what you're saying is right. <laughs> yes, I said yes, it, absolutely. Yeah, it, all of the I, components I are separate. Years ago, I said this years ago when I was having discussions in the networking world, and I completely endorse what you're saying. It's like, you know, let let a let a switch switch traffic or yes. bridge traffic. <laughs> Let a router route traffic, let, or a router if you're in router, the English yes, world, yeah, router. absolutely route, route traffic, um, and, and let a wireless AP be exactly that. It mm -hmm. does wireless and it bridges traffic onto your network, and that's it. So um, just for the older Windows folks in there, you remember in the NT days when you took your Microsoft courses and exams, and they talked about using Microsoft NT as a Routing device. What a crazy idea. Oh, my God. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, 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 uh... yeah, but you could. So, but it so, you're just, so, at that bottom end gear, one of the things that always tips me off to people that have that are just praying on the bottom end is when you have a device that's a router, firewall, and access point. Yes. And it costs less than a device from the same manufacturer with similar specs, which is only an access point. And they yeah. strip features and charge you more because they're preying on the <sighs> bottom end uh, technical people. I don't know what to call them. No, but they're, they're just preying the on the people, lower end of the market, right? They're, they're, so they're preying on the, right, so, so you know, the, the, the ubiquitous WRT54G, right? Linksys had access points that didn't do anywhere near what it work did for more money they, they just they, they, that's a sign that you're getting taken i think i do also want to mention uh just a tip for our listeners uh i forgot what i was putting on twitter but someone recommended uh this new device that is available for pre-order today from netgate.com which is a site that i've used in the past netgate is <coughs> netgate rocks. we love we love netgate um it's a netgate sg100 micro firewall security appliance with pf sense it retails for 150 dollars um and what's interesting is it is uh an arm cortex a8 cpu which i believe is a dual core correct me if i'm wrong listeners uh, it's oh, they will. <laughs> yeah, they will. <laughs> 4 gig eMMC, 512 uh, megabytes of RAM, DDR3, uh, 2 gigabit ports, uh, and set up to be your firewall. And again, yeah. that's, a, that's an SG100 micro firewall from, from netgate.com. Uh, <clears throat> really awesome uh, a device. And kind of to Troy Hunt's post uh, could, could play into your uh, home security solution. Uh, make sure you check out Troy's post, wiki.securityweekly.com. Uh, there's a link to that in there. He, uh, Troy did a fantastic job. I applaud him um, for, for writing up everything he did to fix his, his Wi-Fi uh, at home. And I yep. think that there are many of us that are going to go build our own Linux Wi-Fi access points, which I think is awesome. Larry and I have talked about doing that. I think the middle of the road technical is ubiquity. Um, on the higher end, there's ones, and I can't remember the name. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like <coughs> microphone. Otherwise, I'll make fun of a. <laughs> there's, vendor. there's one. Uh, I, I can't remember the name, but there are ones that they retail for more than ubiquity, but they let you just basically like drop it in, and it's really easy to use, kind of thing. I haven't. People have reported success with those. I haven't looked for in all a listeners. While, I, ubiquity is a good way to go if you want to build your own. I haven't looked in a while. That's but great, it, too. I, Come I on and do a segment on Security Week uh, yeah, if you want to build yeah, your I own, I would by encourage the way. folks, maybe it's not the same. The ingenious hardware mm -hmm. used to support you doing creative things with it. I don't know if that's still true. I'm too lazy to do stuff, and people give me things, and I use them. I, I would uh, I'd double down I would on the next recommendation. I, I would feel dirty, f but it, it's, yeah, right. Yeah, I know. I really, I, I do like the Netgate hardware, well, and I go think to Netgate, it's great yeah, that they're following that up with a PF Sense. It's it's been over a decade that people that were interested in wireless things have been going to Netgate to get good gear. So, uh, yeah, I, there is one last story that I want to make sure we talked about. Um, there is um, Admiral, which is one of the UK's largest uh, insurers, is 
using Facebook data to help calculate how much car insurance they should pay. Yes. And the articles I saw speculated what we've been speculating for a long time is that <coughs> once insurance companies can look into your refrigerator, they can also calculate these kinds of things. And this is evidence that the insurance carriers are moving in this direction to use the data collected about IoT devices to impact your insurance rate. Kind of goes back to our conversation with David in the beginning of the show about how important your privacy is online. There are already uh, car insurers that will send you the OBD2 oh, yeah, plug-in. What, what could go wrong there? What could go wrong there? Uh, and we've talked about this in the past, but this is uh, evidence that... Does, does OBD2, like... Pick up whether or not you use turn signals because Californians would be screwed. Does it? <laughs> it <laughs> might. Yeah. I, I, I yes, don't know I for sure. There. Uh, I'm sure one of our listeners in, is in probably screaming at the podcast right, right now. Right, right. In Massachusetts, yeah. we use turn signals to throw <coughs> the opponent off. Um, so. Well, they said by um, in the, the last uh, paragraph, kind of, uh, I remember reading this, Jack. It says, by providing us with new and better ways of doing things, IoT offers real potential for improving our lives, but it depends on who the technology is built for. We're missed if we allow new generation internet connect devices designed to benefit insurance companies. Uh, and they talked about braking and like how the things that connect to your car can brake, like detect whether you're braking really fast or not. In impact or insurance. There's two uh, stories in there that I added on this. Maybe the other one. Yeah, that's. Yeah. The, I mean, that is significantly scary trend. Uh, you know, it's as the stock going down the the path of uh, you know big big data analytics uh, and brother? joining in these uh, companies. Big brother, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, had, I had to mention big data. Big you know. data, big brother, potato, potato. Hey, um, well, Paul's staring at something. Sorry. At least <clears throat> there's. Nothing that runs half the freaking internet that's vulnerable, like MySQL, right, Joff? Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. A good one, Quite great segue, right. yeah. Hey, oh, so, and the uh, good news is MySQL is still a monolith. There aren't forks of it, and the patching structure isn't a nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good <laughs> and, the, and the root isn't reliant on Oracle, because then we'd be screwed. <laughs> Yeah, so this Have week I made goes, it uh, for my brief bit of optimism earlier yet? <laughs> yeah, just 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 when you thought that things were optimistic, but yeah, there's some critical flaws in MySQL that give uh, give root access uh, uh, to uh, people that that exploit them. Um, pre there's a privilege escalation and a race condition bug. It's CVE 2016-6663. Notice the 666 in there. Whoa. Mm. Um, the the more severe the two bugs Why does is that glow? Uh, is a race condition that allows a low privilege account, such as one with something like you know just select rights or create and insert rights. Uh, they have if they've got access to an effective database, they can escalate the privileges and then execute arbitrary code as the database system user, uh, i.e., uh, MySQL, for example. Um, so this this is not good. Um, there's another one. Uh, it's a root privilege escalation uh, where uh, the root, the the bug allows attackers with uh, MySQL system user privilege to further escalate to the root user, allowing them to thus fully compromise the system that the database is actually running on. Uh, so these these are to be taken seriously. Uh, patch now. Uh, patch as soon as Oracle has uh, got the uh, patches out. Um, or uh, what's uh, no the, joke. <laughs> what are, what's the um, Maria DB right? The the open source. Yes, the Mariah DB. Yeah. Mariah the open source fork. Whatever. <clears throat> Oh, it's no joke. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's not joking around. So uh, yeah, get 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 patching everybody. Get patching. Uh, that, that's very seriously new. <laughs> new this serious. week, patch your shit. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> I want to thank everyone for tuning in to this edition of Paul Security Weekly. <clears throat> thank our special guest David Koplovitz. Hey, thank well our uh, fabulous co-hosts Jack and Joff. Thank everyone for listening and watching. Make sure you go to securityweekly.com forward slash survey. Give us some feedback. Yeah, do we that. Take it seriously. Do oh, that. Oh, oh, do oh, that real, quick, real quick before we, we, we take it out. Um, huge shout out to my uh, Python for Pen Testers Sex 573 class last week. You guys were awesome. And thanks for asking me the five questions. Awesome. Sweet. Jack, take us out. Uh, over. And... Out! <laughs>
<laughs> Whoa. I think he needs a colonoscopy after that. 